give us some of uh, I like to call Ian's insight. So let's just jump right in because this is uh, one of the crazy days that uh, we <laughs> we're all been living for. So first up, let's take a look at what's going on into uh, the crypto market itself. And uh, not a bad day. I mean, we've got we're almost at two point six trillion. It's been fluctuating, uh, admittedly, but we're still around that same base price. Bitcoin price is around 61K. Uh, we've got some uh, some certain tokens that are up, Shiba Inu being uh, one of them. And uh, of course, that's been just crushing it lately. Ethereum is up 6%, Binance Coin 8%, 3 and so on and so forth. And yeah, Dogecoin making up 27% in the last 24 hours. Ah, excuse me, Shiba Inu was only up for the last uh, hour but it's dropped 15%, but man, what a run, 143%. So congratulations, Shiba Inu holders. But overall, market's looking pretty darn good as it stands. Also, if we take a look at the ETF, the ProShares is pretty much hovering right where it was uh, before as far as uh, where we were at. Started around uh, 40, 42, and went sideways, dropped some bit, and now it kind of recovered a little bit. So, And also the uh, Valkyrie uh, uh, Futures ETF is uh, around the same one, although it's been that declined initially, came up, and then just trading sideways. So not too much going on there. The big news, uh, in my humble opinion, is uh, what is going on with Facebook. And... So I know some people just loved, they either love Facebook or they hate Facebook. Usually on this channel, everybody hates Facebook and that's just how it is. But this is an interesting story and I think it has uh, uh, massive repercussions throughout the crypto and digital asset space. I'll explain in a second. So this just broke a couple hours ago, maybe three or four hours ago. And what we got here is Facebook completely changed its name to Meta. And when I read this first, I'm like, that's cute. That's a nice little way to do things. Maybe they're just uh, doing it as like, like a transient thing, just to kind of, you know, in some kind of like honor or to like, you know, to generate interest. But this is the new change. So Facebook on Thursday announced it will change its company name to Meta. The rebranding also comes after the company has dealt with a barrage of news reports over the past month stemming from whistleblower Francis Haugen's show of uh, internal documents. But this is the big thing. So again, I thought it was just just a, a small piece that they were going to change and maybe just go right back to Facebook because, you know, that's just how they, they do things, right? And just a, a nice marketing ploy. But no, the company will also change its stock ticker from FB to MVRS, as in the metaverse. That is going to affect December 1st. And that is no small feat to change your ticker for a publicly traded company. The company's stock price was up on more than 3% on Thursday. And this is from uh, the Zuck, uh, Mark Zuckerberg. He says, our hope is that within the next decade, the metaverse will reach a billion people. Let me say it again, a billion people. We've only got around 6.6 .6 billion people on the planet. So it's pretty good, pretty good uh, reach. Host hundreds of billions of dollars of digital commerce and support jobs for millions of creators and developers. Boy, I sure hope so. And uh, we can take a look at just how things have changed over the last couple of years, uh, thanks to uh, the coronavirus. Everybody's a lot of more people are working from home. They're working distance wise. So the metaverse could be just a big one just for commerce itself. So that is the first part. And the second part I found interesting. It reminded me of an article I read in AP News. And it talks about this was from October 24th. Uh, it says what the metaverse is and how it will work. I just like to, you know, take a look at what's going on here. And the whole part of it was just, you know, what the metaverse is. I can explain it essentially. Have you ever seen that, that movie Ready Player One, where everybody's in this uh, this virtual reality world, and they interact with people and they can have uh, different clothes and they can buy things. That's pretty much the metaverse. It's a, it's a 3D world that you interact with, uh, with your virtual reality headsets, if you have a good, a good one. That's essentially it. There's massive ramifications moving forward. But what it says here is Zuckerberg is going big on what he says as the next generation of the internet because it thinks it's going to be a big part of the digital economy, the digital economy. What we've been talking about on this channel and a lot of different channels for a quite a long time, the digital economy. And it's a lot easier. And now I understand why why Facebook was so keen on getting into cryptocurrency because I know there's there needs to be some kind of universal payment system that they can use throughout the entire globe because the US dollar just can't cut it. And uh, if they have something like what they have, uh, Libra, and then it was uh, re whatever it is, and that's, uh, I don't know how well that's going. But now we can see that uh, products that are in the metaverse, products that are in, are in uh, digital assets, NFTs, products that have to do with payment systems that can be used globally, these are gonna be big and uh, I think Facebook kind of saw the writing on the wall. And then also, uh, you know, former employee, but this is what was interesting. And Zuckerberg says this, there's also a lot of startups that could be potential competitors because remember, 
people think, oh, the metaverse is just going to be owned by one huge company. Well, I mean, in some certain sci-fi books like Ready Player One, if there's a dominant company that's owning a big, large portion of it. But there's a lot of different players out there. And especially right now, it's very early. The big thing to remember is this. Video game companies are also taking a leading role. Epic Games, Roblox, name the ones that you have. Consumer brands are getting in on two. Italian fashion house Gucci collaborated in June with Roblox to sell a collection of digital-only accessories. Coca-Cola and Clinique have sold digital tokens, pitch as a stepping stone of the metaverse. And then, of course, it goes into, could this be another way to steal your data? Of course it is. It's Facebook. That's what they're going to do. But the thing that I was thinking about myself was, okay, all these things are coming up. These things are going to happen. And we know they're going to happen. And even Facebook has like kind of come to the forefront and go, this is what is uh, it's actually going to be. And there's a reason why why Facebook acquires different companies or takes root in different things. Like they didn't just sit around and let, let Instagram grow too big. They acquired Instagram. They didn't sit around and go, you know what? We need some type of uh, messaging platform uh, where people can communicate. We're going to acquire WhatsApp. And then, you know, just down the road, they just acquire all these different companies. So they, they want to stay relevant and on top of everything. Now they're saying the next big forefront, which is going to replace the mobile uh, universe that we have because everything was just you know online the browsers then it became mobile and the next step is the metaverse so how can we as uh, as cryptocurrency enthusiasts get ahead of this so this is only investment opinion not investment advice and this is how I see things so if you go to coin gecko and uh, if you click on categories you can categorize it to a bunch of different things so for this one the thing I would look at is the gaming sector because just like they talked about with uh with uh roblox and uh, uh, uh infinity uh, uh the other ones that uh what do they have it was um ba -ba -ba. Oh, epic games and stuff like that so if there's a way to transact within these games or if there's the way to take some type of weapons or to take wardrobe or anything like that like we've been talking about forever well now that Facebook is doing these things. Maybe they're like, maybe we should get on this a little bit more so. I mean, they're already there, but even to accelerate these things. So this is what I would be definitely looking at. I mean, Axie Infinity, sure. Engine Coin, I've got a bunch of that stuff. Sandbox, I want a little bit. Wax, be able to trade these NFTs and, and shoot these NFTs all the way on. Alluvium, Veracity, Yield Games, you have a game. I don't know anything about that one. Starlink, heard a little bit. Rank 227. Also, that's, a, that's an easy play. And of course, look at the metaverse. And then I think, again, just because Facebook is there, they're not going to own everything. Take a look at Decentraland, The Sandbox, Yield Game, Yield God Games, UFO Game again, Starlink again, Decentral Games, Boston Protocol. That's for e-commerce and things like that. So again, look, I don't know exactly what's going to happen, but I can tell you this. This move from Facebook wasn't taken lightly to just go, let's just go into the metaverse. This could be potentially the way that things will go. And these are the products to potentially look into the future. Because I'm not really uh, the expert in this sector, I'm gonna bring in a friend of mine, Ian Bellina from Tokenmetrics. He's gonna talk to us about what he sees and what he hears, especially about what happens with the metaverse and things to actually uh, do a deep dive and look into. So